There are a lot of small combat craft to choose from in X4. With all of these options, your first question may be which one is best? For scouting, that's easy. The Pegasus. It has the highest travel speed of all the scouts in the game. When we look at interceptors... Which brings us to fighters and heavy fighters. Now fighters tend to be faster, while heavy fighters tend to have more guns. Not 100% of the time, but that's a good generalization. But I'm combining them together for one reason. Carriers. They both take up the same spot in the launch bay, so end up competing for that space. Before we start comparing, I need to talk about how I got these values. Every ship was given Argon Combat Drives Mark III's, Combat Thrusters Mark III's, Talati Shields Mark III's, and Pulse Lasers Mark II's in all the weapon slots. This was so every ship was working off the same equipment. We are not judging them on their possible loadouts, just what each ship's baseline values are and how they compare to each other. If you want the hard numbers, you can check each ship's encyclopedia entry. You'll see in this box a whole bunch of numbers. Those are all determined by the thrusters, and the rankings were the same for every ship in all five categories, so I combined them all into one group called maneuverability. There are also ship variants, Vanguard and Sentinel. We are throwing out the Sentinels because every ship has a Vanguard variant, but not every ship has a Sentinel variant. We are trying to keep that consistency here. The difference between the two is that the Sentinel variant has higher hull and cargo space, while the Vanguard has more speed and crew. So with all that set up out of the way, let's get started. We are going to start with the Argon's entry-level fighter, the Nova. It's their fastest fighter, so it fulfills the interceptor role, but it's not that good of a ship. Yet it's not supposed to be. Its main advantage is that it is cheap. In fact, it is the cheapest fighter in the game. It is also very easy to fly, which makes it a good choice for your first combat ship while learning how to fight. A step up from the Nova is the Federation's Eclipse. This is their frontline air superiority fighter. It's slower, but makes up for it by being tougher and hitting harder. It has the most hull and shields of all the Argon small craft. This is the ship you'll take to mass fleet engagements. The Republic went a different direction with the Pulsar, focusing on firepower at the expense of everything else. With six weapon mounts, it has the most guns of all the fighters, but that is all it's got. Low defenses and speed makes it horribly vulnerable, and the high production cost means you'll want to protect it. Finally, we have the Federation Quasar, which is just a cheaper Pulsar. Everything the Quasar can do, the Pulsar can do better. This is very much a situation of you getting what you paid for. Not to say that it's useless, this is the cheapest fighter that can carry four guns, but its low price tag is definitely the only reason why you would want it. Argon ships have a lot of firepower for a comparably low cost. They are definitely on the slow side with fairly low defenses. They seem to have a theme of overwhelming their enemies with lots of ships that each have lots of guns. On to the Paranid, their entry level fighter is the Perseus, and it is a very good ship. Very speedy, it fulfills the fast response interceptor role very well. It is a bit fragile and doesn't hit very hard with only two guns, but it is cheap enough that swarm tactics are a viable option. If you want something with more armor and firepower, then we have the Theseus. It even has a lower production cost, but it sacrifices a lot of speed and maneuverability to achieve this. This is meant as a side grade to the Perseus, yet it feels like the inferior ship. A little bit of extra hull and a third gun just doesn't make up for how sluggish it feels to fly. The final Paranid ship is only available from the Holy Order, and that is the Ares. Its stat sheet is very lopsided, sacrificing all of its speed for better survivability and firepower. In fact, it is the slowest fighter in the game, and the second most expensive, but that is because this ship was purpose-built for out-of-sector combat. All weapons have a 100% hit chance in out-of-sector. It is just a mathematical computation that ticks every second. Defenses and the number of guns is all that matters, and the Ares has plenty of both. The Paranid have two specialized ships and a single more general-purpose fighter. 
It looks as though Egosoft wanted to make them able to only rely on themselves. Instead of giving them a theme, they have a more well-rounded roster. Which makes sense when you look at how the Holy Order of the Pontifex starts off at war with all of their neighbors. The Falcon is the first fighter that the Talati have access to. It is their fastest ship, so fulfills the role of patrol craft and interceptor, but it's not that great at it. Every navy needs a fast response craft, and the Talati have to make do with the Falcon simply because it's their best option to have. It does have the highest survivability of all the non-licensed craft, so that's something at least. Once you unlock the military license, you'll have access to the Talati's second fighter, the Buzzard. It gains a third gun and some extra hull, but sacrifices a lot of speed. It's not the slowest, but it comes really close to the bottom of that category. As a frontline fighter, it's definitely not the best, but it is cheap, so it does have that going for it. While you may think that the Talati have the worst fighters around, and they honestly kind of do, I'm completely okay with that. It fits very well with the theme of that race where they are more concerned with becoming an economic powerhouse than focusing on their military. Both the Falcon and the Buzzard have a low cost which means you can simply mass produce as many as you need and keep throwing them at the enemy until the problem goes away. Moving on to the free families we have the Asp Raider. It is a flying gun. Three weapons and a cockpit strapped to an engine with really nothing else to it. It's not the fastest, but it does have the highest acceleration and maneuverability, which definitely makes it zippy. And it needs to be because it has no survivability. At least it's very cheap, so replacing it won't be too difficult. As the name suggests, it's better suited to skirmishes than mass combat. Our second free families fighter is the Baller, and it is very well-rounded ship. It can perform any combat duty expected of a vessel of its size. Its single shield generator does mean that you'll start to accumulate ever-increasing losses as the fight drags on, even with its high hull rating. But remember that these are split ships. Hitting hard and fast is the only way they know how to fight. For the Xyarth Patriarchy, their entry-level fighter is the Asp, and it is surprisingly good. In fact, until you increase your faction reputation and unlock the military licenses, I would consider the Asp to be the best fighter available to you in the early game. Even after you gain access to more ships, the Asp is solid enough that you can keep using it and be completely fine. The next Xyarth fighter is the Mamba. Fast, maneuverable, and cheap, this is their patrol and interceptor craft. It also holds the distinction of being the only split fighter with two shield generators, as well as having only two guns. I wouldn't use the Mamba outside of a fast response role. Not because it is bad, but because the Asp is so much better at it. Our final Zyar ship is the Chimera. With the highest hull rating, five weapon mounts, and very good acceleration at the cost of a horrible turn rate, the Chimera is less of a fighter and more of a dive bomber. This is the ship that you outfit with blast mortars or torpedoes and send against enemy destroyers. It is also the most expensive fighter, and with only a single shield generator, it might not be the best choice for your first wave of attack runs. Split ships are fast. That should come as no surprise to anyone familiar with the X-Universe. But their hulls are surprisingly solid. Many players consider the split to have the best small combat craft around. Combine them with a raptor and you now have a mobile battle station that has the ability to deal with anything the enemy could throw at you. On to Terrans with the Kukri. It's okay, but it is the cheapest fighter the Terrans have available to them, so you have to keep that in mind when looking at their stat sheets. It's definitely not fast, but it does have the worst acceleration. This ship heavily relies on the Terran engine's extreme built-in acceleration rate to help counteract this. I personally would only use this as a patrol craft in friendly territory, as the Terrans have much better options with their other fighters. Speaking of better, we have the Gladius. Only available from the Protectorate, it is a well-armed, well-armored air superiority fighter that will serve you well in 
any fleet engagement. It is very slow and expensive, but for the Terrans, that's considered normal. The Pioneers went for a different design for their frontline fighter with the Callus. Sacrificing a lot more firepower compared to the Gladius, they instead made it faster, more maneuverable, and cheaper. It has the highest shield rating with four generators, which helps to offset its comparably weaker hull. If you favor defense over offense, Callus would be a good choice for you. Now to the Pioneer's Tacoba. Who would have thought that the generally slow-moving Terrans would have the fastest fighter, but they do. I consider this the perfect interceptor. It only has two guns, but it doesn't need to destroy the enemy. Its job is to catch them and tie them down long enough for the rest of your fleet to arrive, and that is what delivers the killing blow. The Terran roster is very well-rounded, as they are meant to be on their own. A separate production line means it's harder to mix and match. They also tend to be more expensive, but everything in the Terran economy costs more. The extra cost is only really an issue if you're playing as the other factions. The last fighter we'll be looking at is the Noden. It is only available from the Alliance of the Word from their single wharf in Trinity Sanctum 7. It may be lacking in firepower, but it's quite fast and handles very well. Combined with its low cost and large cargo hold for its class, it becomes a very good mission running ship. Unfortunately, most people don't even know that it exists until they no longer need it. Having the wharf being known right at the beginning for all starts so that new players would simply be aware of it would be a nice change. According to the X-Universe lore, the Alliance of the Word were trying to get in contact with everyone when the gate shut down so presumably everyone knows they exist. But that's not how it is. Now some of the veteran players watching may be wondering why I ended the video with the Noden when there is still one fighter left, the Moria. I excluded that ship from this comparison video because its speed is so high that when I originally started compiling and averaging each ship's statistics, many had a hard time breaking a 5 out of 10 rating in that category. Normally this would be fine, but it's really a mission ship so I thought it would be unfair to the others. You can eventually build them for yourself, but that requires completing an entire storyline, which will take a long time. This is not a video on the Yaki plot, but if you want some guidance on how to start it, check this Reddit post. If you just want a single ship to try out, the mission where you have to find the irksome ship in Grand Exchange is where to start for that. This video is at its core a stats comparison, purely focusing on the numbers. But if you have a favorite fighter that didn't score well, don't let that dissuade you from using it. If you found a ship that you really like to fly or simply like the looks of, continue using it. For example, I always have a squadron of Nova fighters in every game called the Kayak Knockers. Thanks for that name, by the way. I love it so much. I know there are better ships to use, but I really like the look of the Nova. I don't know if the design was inspired by Babylon 5, but it reminds me of the Star Fury. Plus, the vectored engines are a very nice touch. Because in the end, it's your game. The choices you make are only going to matter to you. And remember that quantity has a quality all of its own. Any ship can perform any task if you build enough of them. But before we go, if you liked the video or found this helpful, please give a click to all the good buttons at the bottom and share so that more people can see it. Until next time, fly safe.